I started uh, the recording a little bit earlier is because I am getting you started in the session and that is what the session is all about. So I want to begin really early to model that practice. So um, one of the things that kind of um, came up unexpectedly was some technical difficulties for one of the participants. Um, so expect that that's going to happen and um, think about some plan B's or alternatives um, when you are first getting started with your students in a course. In this case, um, think about the, the technology needs that you may have that may arise. Um, it's really going to help reduce everyone's um, anxiety level that way. Um, let me sort of um, kick off the session by saying welcome to the Quality Online Course Series, Getting Students Started. This particular workshop aligns with Quality Matters Standard Number 1. And so if you're familiar with Quality Matters, that will make more sense to you. If not, it's fine. It's, um, this session is still going to be useful to you. We did an audio check, but I just want to do one once again for the uh, new folks that have arrived. Um, the text chat is at the bottom of the page. You open up that area by clicking on the uh, purple arrows at the bottom right hand side of the screen and then adding, um, clicking on the speech bubble. I have a picture of the icon up here. Um, and let me know if everyone can hear okay. Again, I want to be able to do it just a quick check to make sure everybody's audio is working and I can see some hands raising and that um, I think is my affirmative that everyone can hear okay um, Ryan called in so excellent our backup technology worked I'm going to just lower some hands here. Um, and like we just went through um, the interface, um, everyone seems to be using that properly. Uh, we do have quite a people, few people in the room today. So um, I think I'm going to um, kind of refrain from everyone using your camera and microphone. Um, we'll continue our communication through the text chat area. That will help everyone's um, connection to this and I think things will go a little bit smoother. Okay, let's start by getting to know each other. Um, that's one of the things that we all like to do whether we're in a face-to-face -face or an online course. So let's start to get to know each other a little bit better. I'll start by introducing myself. I'm the moderator of today's session, Tracy Miller. Um, so if you want to translate to that to a best practice with your online course, think about that instructor role, introducing yourself to your students. And that can um, be a very formal process. It can be a little bit more informal, professional, um, however you like your online persona to be. Um, so I kind of balance it a little bit between being a little um, more informal but still remain professional. So here's just a little bit about me um, to share with all of you. Um, a little bit about my um, personal history, um, a little bit of my scholarship and my academic interests. Um, so if you ever wanted to know more about Tracy, there it is. Um, but I do want to hear more from everyone else. So if you can type into the text chat area your name, department, and any experience you have with online teaching. Um, I do recognize quite a few names uh, in the, the participant list this afternoon. So I'm going to challenge you for with one additional question. Tell me something that maybe I don't know about you yet. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Valor Valerie has no experience and she's from Allied Health and Communicative Disorders. Welcome.
Abby is a TA in the Department of Anthropology with um, no experience. Anne is an adjunct instructor at, in Allied Health and is teaching my first online course this semester. I live in Sugar Grove too. Hey, fellow Grovian. I don't know what the uh, proper term is from for people with sugar from Sugar Grove. I've only lived there a couple of years. Uh, Teresa is from the College of Law, no experience, and she loves iced coffee. I love iced coffee too, but I don't know with this weather if I'm feeling iced coffee today. Um, Bill and Music blended online um, and also loves coffee. See, we're finding connections with each other. This is great. Um, Ashley um, is from the School of Health Studies in the Department of Nutrition. Um, have a lot of experience taking online co uh, classes and have taught two online courses as a TA. Um, so Dan is um, from Counseling adult and higher ed, working um, with doctoral students in a blended program, so 50% of my classes are online. Um, yes, and, and if you have any specific questions on um, a, a blended approach, please let me know. Um, but one of the things about blended in this idea of getting students started um, is giving them an opportunity to introduce themselves in class, but maybe even having one of those um, tell me something I don't know about you activities to add online um, so that folks that miss that introduction um, will still benefit from that, um, but they can even go back to it and kind of remember what they learned about their classmates. Um, Ryan is um, from Biological Sciences, managed Blackboard for in-person courses. Yes, it's kind of an um, teaching with technology. You begin to use Blackboard more and more. Um, love prairie restoration and coffee. Excellent. Uh, Matt is the assistant professor in Allied Health, uh, minimal experience in online teaching. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for letting me get to know a little bit more about you. Um, from just looking at your introductions and your participant list, I noticed that there's a lot of folks from Allied Health. So um, now if, if you didn't decide together to come to this session, uh, you know that you have some resources in your own department to kind of um, share some best practices with. Um, we kind of walked through this, but if you do um, really want to use the microphone, um, especially if I ask you maybe to share some more details on a best practice that you already use, you can use the um, that old-fashioned microphone icon at the bottom to turn your microphone on. I'm going to go over a little bit of workshop etiquette to make um, our session together um, really the most successful that it can be. Um, so if you do want to use your microphone, then raise your hand, use the, um, the little silhouette at the bottom uh, that has a hand raise, and that way I will concede the microphone to you. Um, please only click on the talk when asked to volunteer. That's just so we don't talk over each other, um, or maybe more importantly, that we don't necessarily hear the background noises going on in our offices. Um, you can definitely, it's fine to converse via the text chat at any time. Um, you can chat with each other, um, or you can ask me questions or comments. That is just fine. I usually look for natural breaks uh, to coordinate sort of answer the questions, and I will definitely prompt you um, when I'm looking for um, questions or comments. A couple fun ones. Um, if you would like to use the at plus the person's name to indicate that you're replying to a particular participant, use that nomenclature. That's fine. It's, it's kind of a little shortcut. Um, so. Um, for instance, if you wanted to comment, um, give a shout out to everyone from Allied Health. Um, you could just use at and let everyone know you're giving them that shout out. Another kind of little trick, a little shortcut is to use the plus one. Um, and that's just saying that you agree with someone. So if someone makes a, a comment and you agree with it, you can go ahead and just give them that plus one. Um, save a little time. Uh, 
in the, the text chat area and just kind of says, yeah, good job. I agree with what you're saying. Um, feel free also to use the emoticons. I am fine with that. Your tips for success in this section, uh, this uh, workshop today. First, I would say to minimize any distractions around you. So if you can shut the office door um, or if you can move to a quiet corner, if you're all having some coffee in a coffee shop somewhere, um, whatever you can do to minimize the distractions around you will really help your success in this workshop. Um, focus on the presentation instead of taking notes. I am recording the session, and so you can always refer back to it later. Um, everybody has their own kind of way of processing things, so if you do sort of like to, to jot some notes down, whatever works best for you. Um, but just to let you know that the recording will be available, um, so you can certainly focus in on what's happening in the moment. Um, Feel free to ask questions again at any time, but also feel free to answer others. If someone's making a comment or asking a question, especially those experienced folks, if you have an answer, go ahead and jump right in. Um, this is a collaborative environment. Uh, my sessions are always very kind of open that way. Um, and because it is that way, feel free to share your own thoughts and your ideas. Um, it, sometimes best practices can be slightly tweaked depending on the discipline and certainly um, the years of experience both as a student and teaching and even teaching in a blended environment um, always welcome more thoughts and ideas. My workshop objectives. So what I hope you will be able to do um, upon completion of this workshop is um, really help your students understand the purpose and the importance um, of the course and so that's going to come right at the introduction of the course and so that's that getting student students started feel how to get students started off on the right direction um, you want to help the students feel connected um, hopefully you saw that practice modeled um, when we were trying to see our coffee connections and our uh, department and school connections um, it's important to establish that early on in an online course um, it this next bullet point with helping them understand the purpose we talked about it in the first bullet point but also the structure how is the structure um, going to unfold itself in the online course um, in our modeling practice i've been showing that our structure will be primarily communicating through the text chat area um, and so um, hopefully everyone feels comfortable with that and they understand that the structure will be um, very much um, focusing on my presentation but also interacting with each other in the text chat area and then finally to provide the students with any essential information that they will need to be successful in the course. So that may be both the technology end that we've already talked about um, and also the tips for success. I like to do tips for success at the beginning of the course, but I also like to do tips for success um, each week. So if there's anything that I can help them with, um, I give them kind of that weekly update on um, how the, I think they can be successful. So I want a little interaction right now from you. What do you do on the first day of a face-to-face -face course? And just add those suggestions in the text chat area. Or if you do want to raise your hand and use the microphone, you can feel free to do that too. So far, the um, internet connection is holding up well. Bill says, have students introduce themselves, where they're from, what interests they have, et cetera. Excellent. It's still important in an online course that we get to know our students and that they get to know each other.
He says, talk about my thoughts on what they should achieve throughout the semester. Review the syllabus. Tell a bit about myself. So um, definitely the what they should achieve throughout the semester kind of aligns with what I was talking about with my workshop objectives. And I'll, I'll give you some thoughts on that. Um, tell you a bit about yourself. Yes, we've talked about introductions. I think what um, new thing is the review of the syllabus. It was quite typical to review the syllabus on that first day. Ryan concurs, outline the syllabus, uh, make important due dates known, as well as define the, what the, uh, the students and your responsibilities are. So kind of defining their role in the course. Excellent suggestion. Love the idea about sharing important due dates. Um, maybe not all the due dates on that first night, but maybe some key due dates. Definitely something you want to do that that first day in a face-to-face -face course. If you're typing things in, feel free to continue to type them in. But I think we've already come up with some of those key ideas, the, the things that um, I kind of outlined when I was preparing for this workshop. There's a definitely, oh, bring candy, right? <laughs> Uh, good idea. You want to start a positive vibe going, right? You, you don't want to start off negatively. So bringing candy helps. Um, but introduce yourself, um, overview of the course we talked about, those important due dates, um, reviewing, going over the syllabus. I'm going to add also going over your course policies. Um, is there a late policy? Um, you know, is there a communication policy? The um, etiquette that we've already gone over. Those may all come under the guy of um, policies in your course. Some initial activities, um, uh, introduction, an icebreaker. Let me know if anyone has a um, famous um, icebreaker that really works well in their course. Um, maybe Trace is, is bringing jawbreakers and their icebreaker is a jawbreaker. OK, this, that's why I'm not a comedian. Um, you might want to review any um, prerequisite knowledge that they um, need. Um, what was that course that happened the time, the, right before this course, maybe in their sequence? Um, and then you may actually deliver some content. You might have a little bit of lecture. So all of these activities um, are things that you may do. Um, so the, your big epiphany for today is that online courses are no different you're still going to um, need to do these activities um, for all the good reasons that you know you need to do them when you're in a face-to-face -face course. So it's just going to be, OK, so you can't bring candy to your online course. Um, but maybe there's something else that um, is still going to start it off in that positive way. Um, because I think that's really the, the intent with the bringing candy. You want them to show up and you want them to feel good um, when they and welcome to the first course. So when you're thinking about um, getting students started and introducing your course, think about it from the student perspective. We sort of need to take our instructor hat off and put our student hat on. And especially for you folks that have been um, either recent students or um, online students, um, that's where the, that perspective is, is really um, valuable that you've had that. Um, so we call this the ONE acronym. Um, so organizing, navigating, and establishing. Um, as far as organizing goes, you need to think about everything that the students are going to want to know about the organization of the course. Um, what's going to be in the course? When are they going to see it? Why do they need to see it? And how are they going to find it in the course? Um, and so usually um, this particular workshop is comes at the end of our sequence. We like to do it in December because a lot of folks are getting things finished up and ready to go for their um, spring semester. But in order to share with your students how it is organized, um, you really need to know all of the other components first. And then you're prepared to let your students know how the course is organized. Um, and that goes along with the next one, navigating. Um, where are they going to find the key components of the course? If you start designing a course with 
getting started, you haven't developed, you haven't put all the key components into the course yet. Um, now, that's not to say, don't panic if you, you folks have not figured all this out before you've done the getting started. Um, but just know that it's so much easier if that work is already done. Um, you're not sort of getting ahead of the students um, one week ahead. You've already planned out the organization and navigation. And now you're just sharing that with their students. Um, but if you put that student perspective hat on, you're going to start to think, oh, wow, yeah, when I get into the course, uh, there's some things that I want, want to know. Um, and you're going to want to help them try to, to find them, find the answers to those questions. Uh, the third one, establishing. Any way you can establish the relationships and the connections and how things fit together. So the one acronym is just that tool giving you a little bit of a, a jump of what students are going to be looking for. Pardon me, I just took a sip of water because I felt a cough coming on, so I wanted to spare you from that and turned off my microphone. Um, so let's talk about the principles for introducing a course to students. So here's going to be those practical tips on exactly how you can do that in an online course. Um, we talked about an introduction to ourselves, um, introduction to the students, but we also need to um, introduce the course to the students. And so here's some goals to follow when you're introducing uh, the course to your students. So students, this is the course. Course, this is your students. Um, get the students to connect and let them know you care. So that should be part of your um, introduction. Um, I think one of um, the recommendations was um, tell a bit about myself, Therese said that, um, but also define um, what students and your responsibilities are in the course. Ryan said that. Um, any way you can help the, the students um, to connect with that um, is going to let them know that you care um, about their success in the course. Um, also, when you're doing a course, introduction, help the students understand the purpose and the goals of the course. Um, any way you can let them know um, really why this course is important to them, whether it be um, skills that the, they're going to develop, whether it's the next sequence um, in their program, or even if it's going to help their career goals. Um, you want to add that to your course introduction. Um, you want to think about how it's going to help them understand the structure and flow of the course. Um, so it, that also needs to be in the course introduction somewhere early. Um, any expectations you had for your students, uh, communication expectations, netiquette expectations, um, grading um, scales, that sort of thing. And then you also want the um, course introduction to really help the students to be successful in the course. And um, one of the ways you're going to be doing that is the course introduction is going to really help them um, be comfortable early on so that they can quickly um, jump into that content. And that's where you really want them uh, to be successful. So um, how to get students to connect. So um, first of all, we think of interaction and connection in a couple different ways. Um, if you've been to uh, my workshop on interaction and course activities, you've seen this um, sort of uh, graphic before. So you want to definitely make sure that there is two-way communication between the faculty and the students, and that students are also connecting with each other. So how can we do that? Um, to begin to connect with the course and with 
uh, the instructor, I recommend a welcome page. Uh, this is an example of a welcome page. You can change your uh, Blackboard course entry point to this page. Um, instead of going to um, the course homepage or um, even to the announcement page. And that's so the, the first few weeks of the course, they will see this welcome and they will know how to get started. Um, so we want it to be welcoming but also informative. Um, and so there's a lot of information on this particular sample. Um, it's for a program evaluation page. Um, but it's not too much. You don't want to give them so much that they really can't consume um, this information that you want to provide with them. So you're giving them some sort of top level information and sort of next steps that they can go to. So I've given a uh, course description at the top. Um, I've also given some important dates. We talked about um, giving them some key important dates up here. So these might be face-to-face -face meetings. If you're um, in more of a blended or hybrid environment, let them know where um, when some face-to-face -face meetings are going to be. Um, down below here, um, this is actually Stephanie Richter's course. She's given some really just brief information about um, how to contact her. So some contact information, some location information, um, but also note about how she strongly prefers email. Um, so you know that's giving just some really quick information um, to the students to know how to get a hold of her. Um, some getting started activities, um, which we will go through in a little bit more detail. Um, but after you get through this welcome page and that high level of information, um, what do you do next? Um, so here's some getting started activities. Um, you can see we have the syllabus here. Um, so that kind of tags along with that first day activity of going over the syllabus. Um, reviewing any of the readings and resources. Um, going over the learning objectives for the course. Um, the, your learning objectives may already be in your course syllabus, but this is just kind of putting them a little bit front and center. Um, helps the students understand um, a little bit of that purpose of the course because they're, they're going to know um, what the objectives are for the course. Any kind of policies that you want to add to the course that make sense to you. I like to add, and Stephanie's added it here, the um, ADA statement. Um, which is required for your course syllabus. So it's really easy to add um, that policy to that course entry page. So if the students feel um, welcomed and they have a lot of that initial detail um, right here on this one page, you know, the next expectation is that they're going to kind of get into those getting started activities. So the, uh, the welcome entry point is an idea. Um, another idea is to use a video to welcome the students personally. So that's going to, again, be that way to connect with the students a little bit more. Um, it could be um, a little bit of content, but the idea is to, to just give them that welcome, that positive feeling that they may get if you bring candy to the session. Um, so in this example, this is actually um, what our director Jason Rohde uses in one of his courses. So he's provided a, a greeting, a little bit of a professional background so that the students kind of understand um, where he comes from, but he also adds a um, video welcome. Um, I do something similar in my course. I actually do um, weekly welcomes this way. Um, really easy to use. You can actually use a Blackboard Collaborate panel um, and record yourself the way I'm recording the session this afternoon. But another really easy way to do it is to use your mobile device and just record a um, session that way and introduce your students to yourself and the course. Um, it really helps connect you with your students. Um, this, this is the example of what I use in my um, instructor area. So if you click on uh, meet your instructor, I, I've seen a lot of clever ways to do that. You can add, again, some professional background. 
um, like Jason did. I also like to add my instructor role. So how I, what's my teaching philosophy? How do I um, see myself um, in this course? I think that's um, sort of what Ryan said with the, um, introducing my responsibilities. Um, you can add that in your instructor role. Um, any communication expectations that you may have. Um, so in Stephanie's example, she said, you know, I prefer to um, receive emails. Uh, this is just taking it a little bit deeper and saying um, that I will respond within 24 hours. So I'm starting to, in that course under starting to talk about my expectations, which was one of my goals. Um, and make sure you provide an opportunity for your students to introduce themselves. Um, and really, it, it's very typical, very common, but it's because it works. Use the discussion board. Um, have a getting to know you area. Um, if you um, feel like this is probably um, the first time the students might be getting to know each other. Um, you can make it really simple. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You can be a little bit more clever and talk about um, like this getting to know your activity that I have on the screen here where everyone is asked to give um, three examples of identities that they have and maybe a symbol of that identity identity. In my course, I do two truths and a lie. So I have the students share um, two things that are true about themselves and one lie. And then the other students have to guess which one the lie is. Um, those more clever ones might be really useful um, for students that may be in a program together. They already may know each other really well. Now you need to get them to know, you need to get to know them a little bit better. So give them that opportunity in some way to get to know each other a little bit more. Um, my next sort of goal was how do you introduce the purpose and goal for the course? So I'm going to share some tips with you for that. Um, the first one is to include a clear purpose and description of your course. And by clear purpose, this is the one where I'm just saying, just call it what it is. Say, hey, it's this is the purpose, and here's a description of the course. And so um, this goes back to Stephanie's evaluation course. And she said that the purpose is to introduce you to the methods of evaluating educational programs using accepted models and data gathering procedures. And she goes on to describe a little bit more about um, that purpose. I also know that she shares, um, she asks the students to think about what their purpose and goal is for the course. And that is definitely something that we'll be sharing a little bit more with. I'm going to go back to Jason for the, uh, the video example. Um, it, it may be in your course welcome. Um, but again, be really clear about um, what the purpose of the course is. Give them that relevancy. Um, and if you're used to kind of delivering that in that initial lecture, take that initial lecture and kind of um, mix it into your welcome video. Um, in this case, this is a screenshot, but I've left the closed captioning on so that you can see that uh, Jason's literally explaining that this course builds directly upon the processes um, that were in a previous course and um, how it's going to focus on something new in this course. Um, so think about really letting your students know what that purpose is. Um, you can, this is going back to what I introduced earlier with Stephanie saying she asked her students to reflect on how this course, how the purpose of this course was really going to relate to them. And so her discussion number one, she gave them choice to respond to um, three different questions, whatever one they felt a little bit more strongly about. Um, but ask them really what they think the purpose for them of this course is and um, kind of made it more personal, made them think about it a little bit more. Um, and, I know that the um, reflections that she received back really um, talked about how um, 
evaluation is something that we we just are always doing um, certainly in the educational perspective but just as a human being we're we're deciding where to go to dinner and we're deciding um, you know do, the courses we're going to take and we're evaluating those courses evaluation is really um, an important skill and so um, you know, even if the students don't see a direct relevancy, um, by reflecting on this, they might find that connection themselves. Um, so um, my next goal, how to introduce your students to the structure and flow of a course. And I've been talking um, quite a bit here. So I want, before we go into the structure and flow, um, if anyone has any ideas um, that they use to introduce your students to each other or the purpose of the course. Now is the time to add some um, ideas and any questions you may have into the text chat area and I will be happy to answer them or respond to them. And again, if anyone else wants to respond to each other, I, I welcome that. So feel free if you'd like to do that, but I'm going to share some ideas on how you can introduce your students to the structure and flow of the course. The first idea is to provide a comprehensive schedule. I'm going to give you a couple samples ideas on how you might do this. Um, this is not the um, that's not going to be on the welcome page, and it may not even be in the, the course syllabus, especially since um, you want to share those key dates with your students, but a schedule might be more fluid. And so adding a schedule um, in maybe the second step that a student would do when they are getting um, started can really be helpful to your students. Um, but it's also going to help you realize that you really have that structure nailed down and you're ready to share it with your students. So in this case, um, the there's some dates when each unit is going to happen. Um, your course schedule is going to be something that you're going to adapt from your fall to your spring schedule. You're going to change out those dates. Um, any meeting locations that you have. So if you are going to have any face-to-face -face or um, a live um, web conferencing um, session, you're going to want to make sure the students can add those to those uh, their calendars so that they can attend them. Um, what are your topics for each week? If you were to, to give them a topic, um, you know, let your students know. Um, so even if you're not um, opening up content to them um, on day one, you're just giving them sort of a sneak peek on what's to come. Um, and back to giving them those important due dates. Um, any kind of assignments or due dates um, or maybe a reading that needs to be done before a face-to-face -face se session, let them know um, in this comprehensive schedule what's coming up. I told you I was going to give you another example. It's just a different table. Um, it's a little bit more detail. Um, so, you know, whatever level of detail you're comfortable with um, is, is great. Again, you don't want to give them too much up front, but a, enough to kind of allow your students to know what's coming. Um, it's just kind of in a different format. I think one of the, the key differences here is um, sort of some of these resources outlined. Um, if you're kind of using a, a textbook and introducing um, various different chapters that you so selected, um, this reading column may make sense to you. Uh, another great suggestion um, that I love to do is to create a course tool. I use a screen capturing tool so um, the students see what I am clicking on on my screen and they're also hearing my voice. So I will open up the course and I will just kind of um, move them through the navigation of the course. Um, it's really helping them understand that structure and that navigation of the course because I'm moving them through it. Um, it also is great when you create a course tool um, 
if you are not able to fluidly move through it or you are having difficulty remembering where you put something in the course, that's your signal that something needs to be tightened up with the navigation. Um, but I also do recommend scripting it out and thinking about what you're going to click on next that makes the most sense. Um, the scripting will help you stay focused and um, help navigate through the tour, um, but it'll also become your um, transcription for your closed captioning um, if you're adding a course tour to your video. So in this example, again, I um, turned the closed captioning on so you can see that I was describing um, a welcome and a course navigation. Um, my arrow was up here in the welcome start here area. Um, that's something else that I do so that if students um, navigate off of that welcome area and they kind of um, start exploring a little bit too much and wonder, want to kind of get back to that baseline, they can go right back to that welcome start here area. You can also see um, this YouTube video is four and a half minutes. Um, you want to keep it short um, and just enough to kind of let the students know how to navigate through uh, the course easily. Um, my next goal was to set expectations. Uh, and I introduced that a little bit, talking about my communication expectations that I have. Um, but let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, one of the things I said, structure and policies. So I have a information area. My course information is one of those um, default options on the left-hand navigation of our Blackboard courses. And even though my policies are in the syllabus, um, I've added them into this information area so it's really easy for the students to find those policies. Um, here's just some important ones that um, you know, I think are pretty common to add to um, a course. What's your late work policy? Um, you do not have to use this late work policy, but it, the important part is that you add those late work policies to the course in a really obvious place for the students. Um, any kind of policy you have for incomplete work is also, or an incomplete of the course, is also good for the students to understand early in the course. Again, so they can meet the expectations of the course and your expectations, um, which goes hand in hand with this next one. Um, adding, and I use academic integrity in, um, policy. So your expectations on their um, honesty and um, integrity in the course. Add that there so there's no question um, to what that means to the student. Um, we have a speaker coming to um, NIU Faculty Development is hosting it um, coming up in the in January right before the break starts to come up and it's on academic integrity so I'm going to do a little bit of a plug for that um, because um, it's going to be given by Tom Tobin. He is a fantastic speaker. If you have any interest in um, academic integrity and how um, that plays out in an online course, I encourage you to come to that. Um, I'm going to find that. Here it is. I'm going to put that link into the text chat area. It's called Three Pathways to Academic Integrity. Um, so that's my plug for the day. Um, uh, other than that, I, try, I won't try to sell you on anything else. <laughs> um, so once you have let your students know your expectations through your policy, another way to kind of set your expectations may be for participation. And so what does class partition, participation mean um, in an online course? You may be even giving um, some kind of point value for it. Um, I've seen folks um, give attendance points in their face-to-face -face course, and they want to know how to add that into their Blackboard. 
Blackboard course. Um, but how are you going to do that um, in an online course? And so um, discussion boards are definitely one way um, to kind of gauge uh, participation in a course. Um, but what does it mean to actively participate in a discussion board? So whatever that means to you, and I've got, again, a sample here for you, just let your students know what that means. So if you're not giving them full points for uh, class participation, maybe it's because they're not responding to others um, in, in a responsible and constructive way. Um, uh, in, in many cases, that's in a brief way. But also, it could definitely mean um, how, how they're behaving um, in a discussion board. And so that might be um, also described as their um, netiquette or etiquette. And so you want to let them know what your expectations are in form of it etiquette in the course. We went over um, my workshop etiquette expectations at the beginning of this. Um, I told everyone about um, you know the kind of technology I wanted them to use but I also um, you know asked that you raised your hands. Um, we were a little having a little bit fun and being a little bit informal in terms of um, using the at sign and the plus ones. Um, so there are a ton of discussion board etiquette um, guidelines. Google it. You'll find a ton of them. Start with one that resonates with you and then just adapt it to your own expectations. Um, it, you know, but it also can be a little bit more academic um, as far as um, grammar, length. Um, I like this one here. Stay on topic. Um, don't go off on a new tangent. Uh, one of the things that I that jumps to mind too is um, if students do want to have sort of a slightly off-topic conversation, um, let them know that this discussion board is not the appropriate place for this, but perhaps starting a new thread or using an off-topic discussion board um, would be the appropriate behavior for that. Um, Jumping into this idea of how we can help students to be more successful. Um, one of the ways to help them be more successful is to let them know up front some of the awesome student support services that we have here at NIU. And uh, you can add that to the information area. Like I talked about, we could add the policies or add a completely different um, navigation area called student support. Um, called how to how to get support, whatever kind of makes sense to you. Think about some of those support units that are going to help the students and add them into your course design um, and make sure they have access to them at the beginning of the course. Um, so here are just some some ideas. Um, academic support resources. You can link to um, the academic support services we have here. Um, the Writing Center has online sessions. You can um, add a link if you're having a really writing intensive course. Um, the Disability Resource Center um, is a really great resource for your students that they can easily find. Um, I've added this lynda.com. Um, that is if you um, have any technology maybe that you want your students to be able to use. Um, let them know up front that that's where they can find it. Um, there's a link for Blackboard Help for Students. It's actually part of our Blackboard um, page. Obviously, we spend most of our time focusing on um, Blackboard support for faculty, but we do have some support information um, for students. So you can link them there. You can link them to the, the service desk um, in information technologies, um, any kind of thing that you think will help students get started um, off in the right place. Um, add a student support area to your course. Um, and that's that you can you know, copy that into course after course, and it's there, and it's ready for your students. My other idea is to add that tips for success. 
Um, we went over tips for success at the beginning of the session, and we talked a little bit about how it could be important. Um, so um, just adding it back in here to say um, it can be really easy to um, add those tips in. What kind of things, especially you know, my online students out there or my folks that have already um, taught some online classes, share some tips now if you'd like, and then everyone can add them into the tips for success. Whether that's um, get into the course early in the week so that um, if you get behind, you have plenty of time to make up your work. You know, those those great tips can really help your students. Um, but it also helps your students to know that you care about them. Um, so some really specific, I'm getting really into the detail now uh, about what to do to get your students started. And that's to add that welcome start here area, put it at the very top of your left hand navigation. Um, so students, um, if they do get off track or, or they're not even sure what's happening in the, with the welcome area, they can always go back and find that welcome start here area. What I usually do is I, after the first couple of weeks, maybe after that add and drop time, I will um, then switch the course entry to announcements. So they're always seeing sort of my most immediate, immediate announcement. But that welcome start here area is always there if they just want that top level detail for the course. Uh, let your students know if there's any prerequisite knowledge that they need. And sometimes that's very specific. There's a, there's a course sequence that you're letting them know. Sometimes it's just some skills that you're assuming or some knowledge you're, you're counting on. Um, so let them know what that is. Um, and it could be in your, your course description. It probably, again, is in your, your course syllabus. Um, we're just kind of bringing it out to the surface um, by adding it into maybe that course information area. Um, good practice there. Um, let your students know what their technical requirements are for this course. Um, again, you're thinking a little bit ahead of what those technical requirements are going to be, and you're going to let them know at a minimal level what they're going to need to be successful in the course. Um, so I've given them um, some Blackboard and email requirements, a couple paragraphs and some support information. Um, but I've also let them know that um, we're going to be using Blackboard Collaborate web conference sessions, and therefore they're going to need um, speakers and headphones um, in order to listen. If you do require them to do a presentation, for instance, and they're going to need a microphone, you're going to let them know up front and maybe even provide them with some um, detail where they can find uh, those affordable microphones and headphones. So again, let them know up front so they're not scrambling two days before that live session um, trying to find speakers and microphones because they didn't anticipate that early in the course. So I did mention that the, all of this had to do with quality matter standard number one. And so I've tried to wrap up all of the, the bits and pieces that quality matters um, research has shown as to be best practices for the standard into this one ginormous sentence. So quality online courses help students understand the course, including the purpose, structure, policies, etiquette, and how to get started. We've covered all of that in the last 50 minutes or so together. But it's also going to help the students feel connected to their instructor and to their classmates. And you want to make sure that you inform your students of any prerequisite knowledge, technology skills, or technological tools required for their success in the course. Um, so we have covered a lot this afternoon um, and chunked it all into the, you know, these last, this last hour together. But I just kind of want to go review some of them by think, saying, here are some of our favorite practices that we've pulled together and how it relates to some of those um, review standards from Quality Matters. The first one is to create a welcoming and informative page as your course entry point. 
We've given you a lot of ideas, a lot of examples on how to do that. Um, you want to make sure that you introduce the purpose and structure of the course. Um, I'm even going to call out structure um, in this case because I think um, we definitely don't want to have them get um, bogged down with how the, the course is going to unfold for them over the course of the semester. Um, I would recommend doing a course tour. You can use the screen capturing video like I suggested, um, but it, it also could be a, maybe a series of um, screenshots, something that's just going to let them know how everything is organized in the course. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself in ways that you're comfortable, seems authentic, um, and that helps you really connect with your students. Um, provide specific steps for getting started. Uh, one of the things that I really recommend with uh, the structure of your course specific to getting started is open up your course um, a little bit early, early. We call it the zero week, um, and that will really help the students go through those specific steps to get started um, before the course actually is rolling on. Um, some students won't open it until the first day of course, um, but you, I think you'll find many students will get in there early. And then last favorite practice, provide students with ways to interact with each other early and let them know the proper way um, to interact with each other. Um, my online students out there, those of you that have taken an online course, um, you can probably, um, you will agree with me that students often find ways to interact with each other, um, whether they're uh, connecting with each other in other courses, through social media, um, emailing each other. They're, they're interacting with each other, but you really want to um, try to provide the, the ways for them to interact in the course um, and let them know what your expectations are for that. So what did we cover? Um, and I'm in the last minute of the session, so definitely let me know um, if you have any questions. I can hang out a little bit longer to ask any questions you have. Um, but we definitely talked about ways to connect, um, ways to help students in a variety of ways. Um, the set expectations are good for the students, but it's also good for you. Um, so you're not um, trying to jump in there when they're not meeting your expectations. And then um, it's all about the students being successful in the course. So I hope I provided you with a lot of ideas and a lot of ways to do that. Um, but if you want to have a conversation, um, if you have an upcoming course, um, if you're finishing up a course and, you, and you're thinking, okay, here's how I'd like to uh, tweak a few things, shoot me an email, give me a call. Um, always happy to talk to folks about that. Here's some of my contact information. Um, and so I thank everyone for, for joining me this afternoon in the session. In the session.